Oh gosh. This is the F1 hoverboard from Giroir. Giroir? 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 Giroir. It's something along those lines. Anyways, at first glance, it is a little bit gimmicky. Yeah, but it's also awesome. So the thing is, I never want to review a product that I don't believe in. I never want to talk about terrible products. So I put this thing through the ringer, I put it through its tests, and uh, because of that, it got a little bit dinged up. It, it took some war wounds. You're gonna see it with some love. The thing is, at 28, I feel like I'm a little bit past the uh, target audience for these. Do you want to be the star of my next YouTube video? Heck yeah, I do, I'll be right over. So what's the end story of this board? My first impression and my overall impression, oh my gosh. The build quality, the stability, the capabilities of this board are just so far beyond other hoverboards on the market. It, it really is remarkable how well designed and how well built this board is. Now I'm not stacking this up against something like the Segway Mini. That is a completely different design. It navigates differently, it works differently, and so this is not gonna be compared directly to that. So let's go ahead and talk build quality right off the bat. The majority of the body is plastic, although it has rubber foot pads for added stability and traction. It's got an aluminum handle, aluminum wheel guards. The wheel guards also have a carbon fiber decal on them of some kind, although it looks really convincing. Without a doubt, it has one of the most robust builds that I felt on any board. It just doesn't feel at all like the cheap knockoff builds that you see all over the globe. And on that note, it is a UL certified board, the same certification that Ninebot holds for their devices. So you're not gonna have to worry about these catching on fire. They've been certified, the batteries are safe. On a full charge of the battery, you're generally gonna get between 7.5 and 9.5 miles. I'm averaging something right in that range, like eight to eight and a half miles. So if you look at the bottom of the board, you'll also see that the battery can be removed. If you use a key or a coin or something like that, you can loosen it, slide the battery off, and the charging port is actually connected to the battery so you can charge it when it's not attached to the board. Love this feature, it makes it really easy to travel with the board if you need to fly, something along those lines. You can put the battery wherever you need to to appease TSA. But here's the thing. Most of these boards, they're crazy unstable, they're hard to ride, and so the top speed's generally really low. This board, that is not its story. The top speed on this board is roughly 10 miles per hour. Not only that, it's rocking eight and a half inch tires with 350 watt motors on each tire. So it's got a crazy amount of torque. It can hold up to 265 pounds. Now because of that motor strength, the F1 has modes for both adults and for kids based on your skill level and based on your weight. So it can be handled by just about anybody. It does have an IP54 water resistance rating. I'm not putting it through puddles. There's just, there's no reason for it. I don't want to risk it. It is resistant to water but it is not waterproof. Now the oddest, but also come to find out one of the coolest features of this board is the built-in Bluetooth speaker. It's actually a good Bluetooth speaker. I mean, it is built for this. The first time you get moving on this board and you hear the F1 sounds of it, guaranteed you're going to laugh. It's fantastic and hysterical. Luckily, the company thought this through. They knew this wouldn't be for everyone, so they made it super easy to turn this on and off without having to go to the app. Just double tap the power button and you can turn it on and off. But it also does this. I mean, that's just a good time. The speaker's actually got a pretty decent low end and a ton of volume. I mean, it's a really good Bluetooth speaker. To play music on it, all you gotta do is go to your Bluetooth settings, click wheel music, jump into Spotify or Apple or whatever you're using for your music and you're, you're pretty much good to go. Now, if you've ever ridden one of the cheap knockoff boards, you'll know they're, they're pretty much death traps. If you get them up to speed at all, any rotation of your feet is going to cause it to turn, which inevitably is gonna throw you off. So they're really pretty dangerous actually. And while this is still a two-wheeled hoverboard and is going to suffer from that a little bit, Jairur has made a huge step forward in making them more stable by limiting the amount of turning that you can do when you get up to speed so it allows you to straight line much easier without fearing that you're gonna fall off. Where other boards are much more twitchy at higher speeds, this feels much more stable. So even when you're trying to force the board to turn at higher speeds, it takes a much larger turning arc which makes it much safer and doesn't feel like it's going to throw you off the board. Now of course once you're standing still, it's just as twitchy, you can spin just as quick as you would with any other hoverboard, but it is more stable at higher speeds because of the advanced programming. Now one of the most awesome and terrifying components of this board is you can turn off speed limiting on it. When you turn this off, this is going to allow you to approach that 10 mile an hour max speed. 
And I'll just tell you, it feels kind of terrifying. I mean, you don't really need to be going 10 miles per hour on this. It is plenty fast at seven or eight miles per hour. That being said, I do leave the speed limiter off. It is so much fun to not have it constantly throttling you, and I'm glad that they give you the ability to turn this off. So we know that high schoolers can rock this thing. I wonder how my dad would do on it. He's actually doing all right. It feels like you're skate ice skating and your ankles are tied together. Lock your glutes. And lean forward. See what happens. Oh. When you fall off, she'll start beeping at you a little bit. Now this is a great time to call out another key feature of the F1 is its self-balancing mode. So with most of these two-wheeled hoverboards, you need to step on it first before the motors kick in. With this board, you can turn on self-balancing mode and it'll automatically balance before you even step on it, making it much easier to get on, much easier to find your balance. If you have to jump off or bail for some reason at a high speed, it's going to throw off the whole self-balancing system. It's gonna start beeping at you. It's gonna release, it'll start rolling. And then when you pick up the board again, you're gonna find that it's beeping Beeping. Whenever this happens and you hear this beeping, you gotta hold the power button, turn it off, and then you gotta turn it back on. What? Oh yeah. The V8 twin turbo is ready. Another thing to remember, while self-balancing mode is activated, the board really doesn't like to be picked up. Oh gosh. So I tried picking it up while self-balancing mode was on, and now you can see it's torqued out. What you need to do is turn it off, turn it back on. Motors are back engaged and you're good to go. Oh boy, left some nice skid marks on my table. Dang it, I think it just ruined my table. Another bit to remember is you can avoid these issues if you turn self-balancing mode off before you pick it up, you can do this in the app. Now one of the pieces that is still unaddressed with this board, and it's okay because I don't expect it to be addressed, but even though it has the larger tires, it doesn't handle off-road terrain very well. The pneumatics and size of the wheels still just aren't quite there. It's going to handle small rocks, pebbles, things on the street a lot better than other hoverboards, but you're not gonna be able to take this off-road very easily. It's a street vehicle, it's made for the street, it's going to handle anything the street can throw at you, except maybe Indianapolis potholes, nothing can survive those. But because it does still struggle a little bit with uneven terrain, I can't quite list this as a true commuter vehicle, but I don't really think that's the intention of it. So where does a lot of the magic happen? Where does all this magic that G-Roar has built into this board take place? Well, like any good 2018 tech company, they have built an app specifically for this board. Within the app, they give you a bunch of features, some that I don't really feel like I need, but are still pretty cool. The app's where you're gonna be able to change the speed control. It's where you're going to be able to turn on adult or kid mode. You're going to be able to turn on or off speed limiting. This is where you're going to fine tune and adjust the board based on your riding style. If you're a parent and you wanna limit the speed for your kids, you can jump in and it has a variable rate limit where you can set it to whatever mile per hour limit you wanna set it to. Disclaimer kids, helmets are cool. Always wear a helmet, always, in life. The app also gives you a whole bunch of less important but still pretty cool features like being able to change the LED lights to fit your vibes. It has a security mode where as long as the board is connected via Bluetooth, you can keep the board on basically a low power mode. It turns off self-balancing and will alert you if anyone touches it or tries to move the board. I can't think of many opportunities where I'd use this. I guess maybe if you're using the Bluetooth speaker as a primary speaker so the board's on, you wanna make sure no one's stealing it this might be a good way to protect it. It's actually a pretty nice feature to have for a board that retails for $560. And yes, let's just go ahead and get that out of the way now. If you're rolling on this board, you're probably also rolling in some money. It is certainly not cheap, but thankfully, Black Friday's coming up. So if you are in the market for these boards, Amazon, $390, you're going to be able to pick one up. Still pretty expensive, but it's at a huge discount versus the normal retail price. So if you're looking for the best of the best and specifically want a two-wheeled hoverboard and don't want something like the Segway Mini, you're buying one for yourself or for your kids, you want something that's reliable, something that's a lot safer, something that's well-programmed, it has built-in security features, this is the board that you're gonna wanna look at. The link is gonna be in the description below. I'll have the link to their Amazon page where you can pick one up. Giro did it. They made an incredible board that pretty much everyone around me has loved riding. It's super rideable no matter what age you are. It's beautiful, it's functional, and I actually give it my endorsement. I'm shocked.